Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the JF17 and we're looking at the usage of the SD10. The SD10 is a active radar homing missile, which means it's a FOX-3 type missile and it's got its own onboard radar, similar to the AIM-120 AMRAM and it's similar in performance to the AIM-120B and the AIM-120C AMRAM. It's usually said it's about somewhere between those two. And being a FOX-3 type missile, that means that we can fire it for the first leg of its journey. It will be supported by our own ship radar. At a certain point, it goes active, otherwise known as going pitbull. At that point, it cuts link with our own ship, turns on its own radar and guides itself from there in the terminal phase. This means that once it's gone pitbull and has entered terminal, then it becomes a truly fire and forget weapon and we can then turn around, lose track and the missile will continue tracking. So the prerequisites for this video that we're about to show are that you have watched the BVR radar tutorial that we've done in the JF-17 section. That covers everything about using the BVR radar, searching targets, locking targets in different ways. All we're going to be showing today is physically firing the missiles. As well as BVR radar, this missile can also be fired from ACM radar modes. And again, we've got another video on ACM radar modes. So let's look at from which types of track and which types of mode we can launch an SD-10. So we've got our radar. The first sub mode is ACM. In other words, ball sight, HUD mode, or vertical scan. Each of these sub modes will produce a STT, a single target track. And the SD-10 can be launched with a single target track. Next is BVR. This section is BVR use of the radar. The first sub mode is RWS. This gives three sub track modes, SAM, STT and DTT. SAM allows us to launch one missile on the target that has the SAM track. STT allows us to launch one missile on the STT as before. DTT allows us to fire two missiles in ripple at two different targets. Then on to track while scan. First is bug. We can fire an SD-10 on a bugged target. Now this is where it differs a little bit from say an F-16 or an F-18. What we can't do is ripple for SD-10s on bugged targets. Technically and theoretically you can but you would have to unlock each target and then redesignate each target bugging them again and that's the only way that you could do it in the JF-17. It's just not really designed for firing more than two missiles at once in a tight ripple. So bug is really just meant for sending one missile out. STT as before. Dual target track, as before, this will allow us to send two missiles out in a ripple at two targets. VS Velocity Search will not support missile. So with that in mind, let's go and do some testing. Let's do a SAM launch. So we're going to do a Situational Awareness Mode launch. We'll do a TWS, uh, just picking these at random, DTT, a dual target track. We'll do a two uh, ripple launch. And then we'll go into a dogfight. We'll do an ACM and a single target track. Right, we're in. We've got some flankers in front of us. First of all, we're going to go to intercept mode and make sure our master arm is on and it is uh, the first thing we said was an rws sam lock so we're going to switch to rws we've got that there make sure we're soy which we are we're going to choose a target we're going to get that one there okay we now have a sam lock there and what we can see is that we have our dynamic launch zone set up for the weapon obviously we've got the weapon selected we've got sd10 on the sms you can see we've got this one armed and ready we've got a minimum range marker there a no escape range marker there, a maximum range marker there, and the hostile is currently out of range. We also have an ASE circle there, a steering dot there, and information there about the hostile is 22 miles away, he's 34 seconds from impact, his closing velocity of 581 knots, and he's 4 degrees to the left of Boresight. We can see the information is repeated up on the HUD here. We've got the range 22 miles there, we've got the uh, closing speed there, he is 3 degrees left of Boresight there, the time of flight of a missile fired now would be 31 seconds we can see this is the target the target designator box is around the target that is the time of flight of the missile we've also got a uh, better stop there because too many things are happening we've also got the ase circle there the idea is that we have to maneuver our aircraft so that the steering dot here is as close to the center of the ase circle as possible the closer we can get it to the circle when firing the more efficient the shot will be in terms of lead and whatnot we've got our dynamic launch marker here this little guy here if he's on top of the box there we're out of range if he's to the side of the box here he's in range if he's under the box here then he's within no escape range 
and if he's on this side here, he's hit minimum range. So what will happen now as we get, oh, and it'll say in range there if it's in range, and if it gets in no escape here, it'll say shoot. So as we close now, what we'll see is that the chevron will get lower and lower and lower and lower until it gets within no escape range, then it will jump to the bottom. Meanwhile, I am going to maneuver so that my ASE circle encompasses the steering dot. Very important to do that. Without doing that, it's very unlikely that the missile will hit. We can also monitor heads down. You can see there is the no escape. There is maximum range. Got a good closure. If he's not going to maneuver, then you can fire in this side here. And you can be pretty assured of hitting him. If he's likely to maneuver to evade, then you want to wait until the chevron gets in this side here, which is the no escape range, which means that it has a good percentage of hitting, even if he dodges. You can see it's now in the no escape range and it's working its way down here. It's now telling us to shoot. Of course, we're in the ideal range to shoot. We've got the ASC circle and the dot pretty much centered, so we're good to go. Before I fire, which I'm about to do with a simple press of weapon release, it says TOF here, time of flight of the missile of 16 seconds. When we fire, that will change to TOA, time till active. That gives us the amount of time before the missile goes pitbull. Remember, we can't lose track and turn away until the missile has gone pitbull. So let's watch the missile fire and watch those timings. Firing now, missile away, retrimming. He's not going to evade because I've asked him not to, very politely. When you shoot a missile, the TOA turns into we got him. Next, we're going to show using track while scan, dual target track, rippling two missiles off on two targets at once. We need to make this soy first of all, so we're going to go S1 backwards. There we go. Now convert this to track while scan. Ping, track while scan. Okay, we're going to take probably the two middle targets, or let's just get a little closer and we'll make a decision. Okay, they're about 20 miles away now, so let's go to intercept mode. Check the weapons are warming up and make sure we've got one selected. We have. They're armed and ready. So next we're going to choose a target. How about that guy there? We now have him bugged. Now we're going to choose another target. How about that one there? Okay, we've now got him in dual target track. So what we can do is now is just fire a missile and it will go for this guy here. Fire another missile and it will go for that guy there in a tight ripple. So just got to wait for our dynamic launch zones again. We're actually in range, but we might as well wait again until we're a little closer. We're 18 miles currently. Our steering dot is right in the middle there, so it's a little hard to see at the moment. Double check, everything looks good down here. He's just re entering the no escape range. Okay, Fox 3, Fox 3. Two missiles out, they're going to go for the two different targets. And if all goes well, we should get two splashes. Not sure which one I'm following here. Boom, and boom. Two down. So that showed Rippling 2 and TWS. The only other one to show now is in an ACM variant. So if I look for a target now, let's see if I can dogfight a guy. I'm going to go to dogfight mode, try and find someone. Go to boresight. Oh, there's one. Look. Get him in the boresight. Go for the steering door. Check our range. We're within no escape. Fox 3. And that's showing it using from, as you see there, an STT from an ACM boresight lock. Only other things to show, some little options or symbology down here. That is obviously the missile, the SD-10. The box around it is showing that's the one that we've got selected. If we select them, then they will first show standby and flash for a few seconds. Once they are armed and ready, they will show arm. There's also here the target type, small, medium or large, by pressing the OSD be there we think that may actually as well as other things determine how this missile tracks we may be wrong we've got no documentation on it but it's just something to think about if you're fighting a large or particularly small target i hope that's useful and see you later